So here in the Rica, baby, still in the Rica. Yeah, it's pretty cool out here, look. Palm trees, the Pacific. Still addicted to listening to bus driver. Why not? Special little places. Over there you can see quarries and you can see hey, up there. What well, looks like quarries anyway. Maybe it's something completely different. This disused looking stadium with pigeons in the commentary box, so if you wanna if you wanna be someone who uh, listens to pigeon commentary, pigeon English, who knows? Hola. I have no idea what that was. <laughs> and there you go. And it's a beautiful day today and I am going to get sunburnt if I don't get to the shop and get myself some cream. Because I got crinkle skin down this way, baby. Everybody knows it. So that's what we're going to do. Going to go for a wander over here. We go, go further down here, there's some lovely little side restaurants and the heat's coming off the beach now, I can see it sizzling from here. <sighs> but look at this empty beach, it's crazy, eh? In this weather, a beach like this on a Saturday in Britain would be completely full. You wouldn't be able to move. You would not be able to walk. You would be surrounded by loads of beach goes, especially if it was COVID, that was quite funny. COVID, you know, in Britain, all the people came out straight on the beach. All the papers were like, oh, look at these terrible people and what they're doing. Up on the hillsides over there, illegal settlements, further down are the same. Is there illegal settlements? Cardboard shacks with plastic covering the top. You know how it goes. And I'm gonna go my usual route. I don't like to uh, necessarily walk the normal routes around here. I'd prefer to uh, take a stroll along the old abandoned train tracks. Maybe they're tram tracks, I don't know. But I think they're old abandoned train tracks. Uh, this is uh, what happens if beaches aren't used. You got just a load of bottles and stuff that have just been dumped here, of course. And the further you get away from the beach, the more it smells a little pissy. So, up there is the pigeon box where the pigeons hang out. And uh, some of you may have seen on me uh, Twitter that I've been, of course, sharing some of this graffiti that I, I've been seeing on the walkers. Any rundown area has got some fantastic graffiti always, that's the way it works. Graffiti and rundown areas go together. Graffiti is an artistic expression that's easy to do and shows that you've got nothing to do, you know. So, it's a good symbol for uh, the issues. And you got hotel over there, of course, and the juxtaposition of the trash as we've seen and here we go this is the world of Boric this is what Boric's chili looks like apparently a few years ago if you'd come here on the borders of uh, Chile Peru and Bolivia it would have been completely and utterly full of people beaches would be full but since then there's been 
the slow takeover of the World Economic Forum, young global leaders and the like. And so now this is what you got. Expect this all over the place. If you allow them to take over, they're not after local regeneration. They're after global regeneration. They're after making a bit of money from the globalism. That's what they want. So expect to see this coming to a place near you. These run-down beach towns. Well, there's a lot of potential for the western places to be run down beach towns too and you can see it's hot here so already you know the hotter it is the harder it is to regenerate that's in my opinion but uh that's what i've experienced because people move slower in the heat arica is um being described to me as perpetual springtime except now where it's bloody boiling this isn't springtime Though it's a nice breeze here and there. But this is a train, a dead train to nowhere, you know? We're on the train to nowhere. That's what we're on. Because we're letting the globalists take over and this is what they're gonna make of your cities. They're gonna make your cities a collection of disused railways, graffitis on wall, litter on the streets, glass, cast around the place except where they live you see when I was in Santiago and I walked through the posh areas it was very much different of course you know they like to make sure their areas are maintained well watered they waste all the water that other people should get access to uh, on their plants on their shrubs because they don't care about you they don't care about your life they care about watering their gardens while yours die it's a competition you know, we, we, we're brought up into this school system where everybody's competing to look cool or look better than someone else. And what a lot of people don't know is that, don't realise that continues. You don't leave school and then that paradigm suddenly shifts and changes. It remains there the entire time. They want to be better than you. For them to be better than you when they've got no skill, no ability, no genius, no sense of care, well, they can't do it the normal ways. They've got to do it by making your areas and your life worse while they make their life and their areas better. And that's their competition. They're not here. People like Boric aren't here to come and change your world. No, not at all. They're here to... Uh, make your life worse so they, they can look better and they can feel better about their lives. And it's stupid because what it means is that eventually the poor rise up and eat the rich. That's it. Eat the fucking rich. That's what they do. And um, I consider myself on the one side, I don't consider myself on the rich side. Grew up in South Wales with, with industry wrecked by the Thatcher government looking around and seeing how they treated people, seeing how they don't care about us in general. I experienced that uh, as I was growing up. And uh, my parents, uh, when, when my sisters were born, my parents couldn't eat on a Thursday. They had to feed the children and they just didn't have enough money. So every Thursday they would have to go without food to budget it was so tight, you know? That's the type of world they want to create, the Thatcherite world, the Pinochet world, the world of the past that was given to them, taught to them by people like Kissinger. They know that as soon as they take your food away, as soon as they take your life away to some extent, that you'll eat each other. And you'll eat each other. People don't, uh, please, oh, gracias. People don't, uh, People don't come together when they're hungry, you know? People turn against each other. And once they realize there's no food in amongst their own worlds, they eat the fucking rich. And the, the, you know, the people right at the top, they're far away from this. They have, that's why they live on little islands, that's why they 
live a plane ride away. It's why they buy up all the land surrounding their houses. It's why you're not allowed in any of their areas. Because they know when the time comes, you will eat the fucking rich. You will chop off heads, you will get nooses ready, and you will eat the fucking rich. Not the super rich, they're far away from it. This is where the stupidity is, because a lot of the rich do their bidding with this idea that, oh, it's not gonna be us, historically. But the cycle, the cycle constantly goes round. And these people who think they're on they're on this side of the rich that they're up at the top 3% as I say them. well you're not at the top 0.1% that's the only way you're going to be saved in this system that's the only way it works this fantastic graffiti down here this wonderland graffiti is amazing and uh, if you want a symbol of the rich the elites dystopia I think Alice in Wonderland is a good example, written by a paedophile who abused children of the headmaster of the university he was at. How about that? Who took naked photos of Alice. Perfect example, the grinning Cheshire cat of the elite. And all around here, man, People are addicted to drugs on the street, having trouble with life, there's shit everywhere. And eventually, like I say, that comes back round to haunt them, haunt us, haunt history. Everything in history works in like 50, 70, 100 year cycles. And this is, I mean, you can go and find people who study and, uh, write about these cycles and it all makes sense when you read it it all makes sense the wars all cycles the poverty all cycles the cultural uh revolutions all cycle the 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 cultural anomalies um like transgenderism and stuff like this express themselves differently throughout history but uh, are very visible you can see what they are and what they do is they uh convince us to fight against each other and they're successful with it every time it's a cycle and then once we realize that we're not the enemy we turn on them and we eat the fucking rich that's the way it works eat the rich and the rich sit there laughing at us till suddenly they die until suddenly revolution comes some form of revolution and they're all dragged from their houses like Lavoisier, the uh, famous French scientist, I believe he was the man who discovered oxygen, if I remember correctly, like, or put forward the principle of oxygen and did scientific tests that proved that something was there, etc, etc. And uh, what happened when the French Revolution came? Did the people say, oh, well done, Lavoisier, you went and discovered something really great, we'll leave you alone. No, he had his head chopped off. And then what happened? A strange cultural anomaly where they added um, an extra month to the calendar in France, for instance. It's a strange one, isn't it? Add an extra month. It was 13 months under the, after the revolution. Things like that, lack of reality, come after certain points, certain points in history. And the rich kind of work this out, you know, people like Kissinger and stuff, they work this out. They work out that these things exist and they map them and they look at them and they try and predict them and then they try and control and manipulate them so the right people get eaten, the right rich get eaten, not them. So if we're gonna change something, if we're gonna break a cycle, it's the top top, not the top that have to go. You don't eat the rich, you eat the super rich. And watch the rich find and look up and see exactly what happens to them. You know? And that's the only way to, uh, to break a cycle. Is to break it. It's to stop it happening. You walk along the train tracks. 
the disused train tracks. Once upon a time, you wouldn't be able to walk along these train tracks because this would have been bustling, busy. People on the beaches any, everywhere. And the people filled up on the beaches here, on the wonderful beach here. Well, that, that well, wasn't that long ago, like I say. But what you get is this. Eventually, you get a run-down area, impoverished people, sadness, no hope, no chance of a proper education, rape, abuse, torture, manipulation, murder, revolution, and uh, the, uh, the, 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 a change that is not real. A fundamental trick of the mind or trick of the eye, an illusion of change. <laughs> the delusion of change. Where the poor think, oh, that's it, we've done it. We pulled down the rich. And then a the new super rich are created because that wealth is freed up and goes back up to the top. And some people say nowadays, we're at the end of history. This is a different time where history is going to change, where the people of the world are going to rise up and it's going to be a new beginning. And that's a really nice thought. Yeah, okay, very nice. You think that's going to happen, but the same cycle continues unless you can see the cycle, you know the cycle, you change the cycle. And how many people actually change the cycle nowadays? How many people can see a cycle? How many people are educated? Really fucking educated? I can tell you that people think they're educated. They go to college, they go to university. You know, members of my extended family and the like, uh, teachers, and they think they know history. <laughs> and because they teach history to children, so they teach little, little kids history, basic history, and they read books written by people who were there to pull the wool over their eyes. And then when you research, properly, deeply research the history, you discover these people who are supposedly the heroes are usually the monsters. And that they have completely and utterly held down populations, they've held down people, they've destroyed civilizations because they see the cycle, they know it, they sit on top of it, they watch it from above, and they win. You know, a king is a symbol. A queen is a symbol. You pull down a king or queen, regicide, makes no difference. They're not the ones in control, they're a symbol. Pull down symbols, what do you get? The belief of victory. A false belief. The false perception of victory. And it's not true, of course. The only victory in this world that we can get, the only victory that we should strive for is a true victory. That means that the top never gets quite refilled up again to do the same thing and, and, and end up doing the same thing again, end up treating people in the same way, end up manipulating society in the same way. That's what we gotta hope. That's what we gotta create. But what do they do? They create ideologies that make you think you can do this. It's a communism. Oh, everybody can be equal. No, everybody can be poor and the rich sit at the top. You just get a new type of rich. So when it comes down to uh, communism, uh, in the past, say, Soviet communism, who's, who's the rich ones? Stalin and his buddies at the top and anyone who agrees with Stalin. And it's controlled. And that'll happen again if we had some form of communism, communitarianism, anything like that. It's controlled by somebody. It's not equal if it's controlled by an elite at the top. They will convince you. <laughs> they will convince you that they are the ones who are your saviors. They are there to help you. And they will go home and they will drink champagne and laugh at you. 
the Elon Musk's of the world, they'll convince you. They'll bring a lack of censorship and freedom, but they'll bring a different type of censorship and a different type of authoritarianism where they'll chain you all of the same. That's what they do. They chain people. The, the rich need to keep their place, and the only way to keep their place is to have the four poor, the poor fight against each other, rip each other apart, and then aim at the level below them. It's a continuous, continuous cycle. And why? Because these guys who you put your faith in, who you vote for, who you put into office, dress up in their thousand dollar suits and grin at your fucking expense. They grin inanely and they say, we're on your side, we're on your side, we're on your side. And eventually they get eaten. Eventually the poor people realize that they're not on the side and the rich get eaten. Eat the fucking rich. So what do we do? Is there an ideology out there to suit us? Is there a way to stop this fuckery? Man, I wish I had answers. I wish I had answers. But I can tell you all of the options they give you. Everything from communism to democracy to fascism. All of it. It's all a lie. And it won't get you anywhere. It's offered up to you because it's a lie. And because it will not do anything at all. It's all offered up to you because it's controlled, manipulated. It's all offered up to you because you will eat it up. You will take it. You will sup it up. And you've got to stop supping it up. That's the problem. It's not the problem isn't them. This is something we've got to realize. The problem is not them, my friends. The problem is you. The problem is us. The problem is we cannot see. Because they've taken these things that we should learn, they've taken them out of our education system. We don't get educated in school. We do not get educated. So, from Arika. That's it, that's it. That's it, that's Thank it. You very much. As bus driver says. If this is the end of history, then uh, future generations will never read about it, will they? But it's not. If environmentalism is going to be needed to because the world's being killed off well we're not going to be here are we but that's not true we're next generation will be here next generation and generations before me people talk like this hundreds of years ago people talk like this thousands of years ago people talk like this they use different words they use different words but they were all saying the same thing eat the fucking rich Johnny Vedmore from johnnyvedmore.com, funkymonkey.com. I'm out. The young generation, like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, President of, Brazil, of uh, Argentina and so on, certainly penetrates the cabinets. 